So this is Helen. Hi, Gary. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Helen. Hi. Um, I've actually got a couple of questions to ask you, um, if that's okay, going back. I don't want to hog the mic, though. Um, oh, oh take, your, take, your, take your time, <sighs> Helen. Okay. okay. First off, um, how would you deal with somebody who is so stuck in a fear of um, losing control of their life again because of issues that have happened in the childhood, that they can't seem to progress beyond that fear with the tapping? So if I understand this right, Helen, your client comes in, they have this, this current fear, yeah. which is, to use my er earlier comments, is caused by stuff from the past. Uh -huh, I have that right? Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay. And so that's typical. What they're doing in the, in, the, in the current time is they're replaying in one way, shape, or form all this stuff in the past. They're bouncing yeah. off of all of that. Well, that's that to me is the tabletop and table legs that we talked about earlier. And that is all of these childhood events and experiences are causing the current fear. So what we do is we, I mean, you're, you're already telling me they can, they're already telling you about the past experiences, are they? Yeah, they've already told me about those past experiences. Okay, yeah. G give me an example of what they might say to you. Um, well, the, the main issue with this particular lady that I'm thinking about, she came to me with um, a fear of injections. But on questioning her, um, she's had a very complicated upbringing. Um, <clears throat> she started off the first seven years of her life being brought up by her father's ex-wife. And then she was reclaimed by her biological father and biological mother and then suffered abuse from the mother. <clears throat> Excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, and her mum has a lot of children um, by different men. And they, they, all the children have gone through a similar sort of abuse. Brilliant when they're babies. Once they reach toddlers, that's when the abuse starts. Um, and then this lady left home early and got herself involved in abu an abusive marriage, um, which she had to leave for her own life, really. Um, so she has an issue now around control, I think. Okay. Uh, well, I know, um, yes. because people have been controlling her, and she, I think she sees having an injection as losing control. Okay. But we can't, we can't get beyond this control issue. Well, and I, in my experience, Helen, I don't think you're going to get beyond it until you go back to those specific events and collapse them. Now, with the description you just gave me, in my own mind, I'm seeing all kinds of specific events. I mean, we have specific events with the adoptive parents. We have specific events. The mere fact that we got adopted is one, okay? Uh, and there's specific events there. I mean, I'm, some people feel rejected and, and not wanted and, and, and so on. So these various events that occurred there all need to be developed. And then when you get to the the adoptive parents and the abuses and so on there, these are all specific events, okay? Yeah. So, so you know, the, the time my adoptive father hit me in the kitchen and knocked me down, um, I, I made that up, would yeah, be sure. a specific event. It's one that gives rise to all these la lack of control, et cetera, because when you're young and you're hit by your father, you know, lack of control and, and so on. Uh, he's bigger than you, and, and you're helpless, and, and so on. So you do those specific events, but you, you, just to use an example that I just gave, you would take that one, and that one is likely to have a number of sub-specific things in it. They could, okay. like sub-emotions, for example. Uh, they could have helplessness would be one emotion. Mm -hmm. Anger might be another one. Okay, guilt might be another one because maybe they think they caused it. Okay? okay, so that's dealing with it very thoroughly. Now, what I'd, I'd like to mention here is that this kind of a task seems to be an ominous, ongoing, forever thing because you may have thousands of specific events to deal with. With EFT, you don't really need to do that. We have what we call within it something called the generalization effect. Are you familiar with it? No, I'm not. No. Okay. All right. It's like this. If you deal with some specific events. Here, let me back up a second. 
uh, uh, let's just take the specific events that had to do with the adoptive parents. Okay. Okay. Now, if you deal with one of those specific events, like I just talked about a moment ago, uh, and then you deal with a second one, and a third one, and a fourth one, and a fifth one, you're going to find that after a while, after you've done five or ten or fifteen, even though there may be hundreds of them, that there's enough commonality between these specific events. Similar people, similar environments, similar gestures, similar tones of voice, and so on. That after you've done five or ten, maybe fifteen, really well, it generalizes over all of them and the whole tabletop collapses. It's really a delightful thing that happens in there. But it all depends upon how detailed you get and how thorough you get with the very specific events that are causing these things.